Hi there, I'm Kevin Ferris, and I am a student at Illinois State University down in Bloomington, Normal, Illinois. I also have a radio show called Speechless on Cities 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington, Normal. And I've been covering a lot about what's been going on with our gubernatorial election, specifically the Republican primary. When it comes to our Republican primary, we have a slate of candidates that have a wide-ranging view on the, on the future of Illinois. I gotta tell you, the one thing that we really need to be focusing on is the word accountability. And I gotta say, from all of the different candidates, I see Darren Bailey as the, as the accountability candidate. He looks at crime. We need to be holding criminals accountable, and not only in uh, Chicago and the suburbs, but also in central and southern Illinois. He looks at our finances in Illinois. We need to be holding those accountable who have dug us into several billion dollars of debt. You look at abortion, abortion is all about accountability. We need to be making sure that we are accountable for our actions and protecting the right to life. In terms of gun safety, we need to be voiding the void and ensuring that those that are, that are using guns illegally are held accountable and those who are safe and responsible gun owners can have their right to bear arms protected. At the end of the day, when you're looking for your governor candidate, who's gonna hold those in corrupt offices accountable? Who is going to ensure that Illinois is held accountable? And that's Darren Bailey. Thank you very much. You know what? Obviously, there's never been a time where we need to truly seek God's guidance. We know what's going on with the leak out in Washington, D.C., and the terrible, terrible backlash of people protesting elected officials, and not only that, appointed officials, people that weren't even running for office. They are there providing what we are guaranteed by our Constitution, which is three branches of government. So let us be mindful, let us pray for not only our candidate here, Darren Bailey, but for those that serve throughout this country, no matter what side of the aisle they are. So let us go ahead and seek some guidance from the Lord. Dear eternal and gracious Father, we know that you see all, you know that you know all, and you know that you are the only true guidance that we need. We ask you to look down upon the state of Illinois, the nation of the United States of America. Find favor with us. Let us turn back to you. And all that we do and all that we say, let us seek you above all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Reading that quote, I knew I was conservative. I believe in that. A small, limited government. Illinois is broken, but we will fix it not just for you and I, but also for the generations to come. The kids that I will be seeing every day in the classroom. Darren Bailey is the only conservative in this race that can save this state. He has the drive, passion, and policy to restore Illinois. I had the privilege of meeting Darren the first time back in October of 2020, before he even officially announced he was uh, his candidacy. 
We were at a reopened Illinois rally in Norwood, Illinois, and when Darren somehow found out that the college Republicans were in attendance, he went out of his way to find us, introduce himself, and take some time to discuss issues relevant to policy. Darren treated us as huge. Not only did another vote in the ballot box. He did mention that he had an announcement coming up soon and to pay attention. As soon as he announced his candidacy, he had my full support. Looking back at that day we met, I could tell it summed up all he was as a person. A caring, down-to-earth, hard-working man who wants to do what he can to help every single Illinois. All these qualities can be seen in Darren and his campaign. I've gone to several of his events and he has, and I have seen how he does not leave until he met every single person in the room. He has gone to venues and churches all across this great state, making sure he hit every walk and way of life. His constant live videos on Facebook help connect with Illinoisans every day and ensure that they are aware of what's happening in Illinois and his campaign. He always starts those videos with a smile and a hello friend. To dare, we are not just ghosts, pawns in a larger political game. We are friends. Darren understands the average person of this state, and he works his support them. The strongest fighter against the disastrous COVID lockdowns, Darren fought Jimmy Pritzker to end the sweeping mandates and get the state back over. Together, they racked up about $20 billion in state debt, fueled corruption at every level of government, and have pushed longtime residents of this state out in droves. In two decades. Now think about this. In 1967, when Ronald Reagan won his governor race in California, he stated, freedom is a fragile thing, and it's never more than one generation away from extinction. It is not ours by way of inheritance. It must be fought for and defended constantly by each generation. Now you may have noticed tonight that you've heard from a lot of young people. Our event coordinator, Bianca Johnson, is 21. Josh Bender, who just spoke, is 22. You haven't seen him tonight, but Brett Corrigan, he had to get a different event, is 17. He is one of the most vital people in the Bailey campaign. He is 17! And I myself am 21. And the point I'm trying to get across here is that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction, then we must be the generation that fights to defend it. Now to get back to what I started with, the difference between, or I'm sorry, the difference between other generations and our own is that right now, the threat to our freedom is domestic. Recently, we've been fed lies from pompous, pretentious, petulant politicians and elites We've been told that America is a racist nation. We've been told that womanhood is only definable by a biologist while simultaneously male and female are interchangeable. We've been told that the MAGA crowd is the most extreme political organization that has existed in American history. Bullshit. We've been told that parents that are advocating for their children at school board meetings are domestic terrorists. These laughable lies and more are a direct threat to our freedom. And as it stands, there's only one man that can lead us in the fight to save Illinois from this leftist propaganda and tyranny. And that is Darren Bailey. Of course, it is Darren Bailey. Now the difference between Darren Bailey and the first four people I mentioned are governors that we've had. But that he is not born and bred as a wealthy Chicago elite politician. As a farmer, Darren Bailey knows what it means to get to work and get your hands dirty. And as Josh mentioned, Darren speaks to everyone at his events, no matter their background. He understands the issue, issues of the average Illinois voter. Darren isn't bought and paid for by some out-of-touch hedge fund manager. He relies on grassroots contributions of volunteers, real people who believe Illinois can do better. Now what I encourage all of you to do is not only help out and your personal capacity with the campaign, but encourage young people, our generation, to get involved. Because apathy is a bigger threat to our freedom than radical progressivism ever could be. We need to inform, inspire, and motivate the next generation to realize what is at stake at this pivotal moment in our state. There are plenty of people right here, right now, that would be more than happy to get you involved in the Derrick Haley campaign. And I can point to one of them right there. 
donate, volunteer, knock doors, and pass on the information to your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, nephews, pretty much any young person you know that is looking to make a difference and be a part of something much bigger than an individual. Friends, it is an absolute honor to be with you here tonight. Thank you for the sound system, the beautiful flags, the music. Uh, thank you. Cindy and I have uh, we've been in, uh, we were in Rockford last night. We were in uh, Springfield filming for more commercials this morning. I apologize about being late. We were supposed to be here 10 minutes early, but I don't know why. I can't remember. It doesn't work that way in Chicago. So, uh, unreal. Cindy, uh, where are you at? So I'll see you back there in a conversation. She's been outside for the last 45 minutes. Uh, speaking on a kind of a, an interview that popped up. Uh, people enjoy talking to her just as much as they do me. Uh, that's a good thing. Stephanie Trussell, she is in Rockford tonight. Brett Corrigan is in uh, is in Kankakee tonight. And um, there you are. There's my wife, Cindy. Yeah. 35 years of marriage. Four children and 11 grandchildren. That's why we're fighting for Illinois. I've had I'm tired of working so hard for, for, you know, for trying to get ahead, trying to build a future, and the government continually taking it from us. So those days are over with, friends, and Illinois is going to do something amazing for the days ahead. So I come here to you tonight because I know that many people have a lot of questions. So I'm just kind of going to kind of run through some of those questions that I think you have. Number one. Yes, we are winning. I guarantee you that. Number two, uh, we will win. I just want to assure you of that. Money, we have been outspent 39 to 1 since this began. And your mailboxes and airwaves have been filled with lies about us. The goodness of God has granted us the money that we need in the coming days so we have what we need. Uh, there's an amazing family that has found favor with us, understands what we stand for, and in the days ahead, uh, you're going to be seeing us being able to push back to everyone uh, against these lies that have been uh, put out against us. Lies. Did I ever vote for, vote for Joe Biden or Obama? No, I was a Trump delegate in 2020, and I radically supported President Trump in 2008. So you ask, well, where did the message get at that I might have voted for one of these guys? Does anybody here remember Rush Limbaugh? Do you remember Operation Chaos of 2000? Okay, Send Google it. Google Operation Chaos. Cindy and I participated that the only time in our life the first, last, and only time, regretfully, that we pull a Democrat ballot to participate to bring confusion to the Democrat presidential election. That's where all that stemmed from. Okay? So uh, that's the twistedness. The fact that there was so, so I served for 17 years on the North Clay School Board of Education. Friends, where I come from, Clay County, and our school, we are the seventh lowest tax county and school in the state of Illinois. But where Mr. Urban comes from, Kane County and the city of Aurora, the third highest tax city and county in the state. So in politics, it's, 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 it's kind of, remember uh, uh, O'Reilly's spin zone? No spin zone? Well, that's what you do. When we stand up sometimes in the super minority in the House and in the Senate, and we, and we argue against some of these terrible, terrible bills that are coming down, the Democrats, they stand up and they eloquently spin the problem. And they say, you Republicans are the problem. You know, just recently, this, this past session, there were bills coming out to, to kind of water down, to kind of to help our police officers out. Because we have a terrible problem in the state of Illinois. Our streets aren't safe and our people understand that. They're scared. And that is all because the Democrat Party in January of 2021 came out with the safety bill and it took all of the rights and authority away from our police officers. They're letting, they're letting you know, a, a criminals out on the streets. They're emptying our prisons as we speak right now. And they know that it's a problem. So this past fall, or that, or this past spring, they came out with uh, some trailer bills. Uh, just to kind of make it a little, you know, it's election year, election year gimmicks. We stand up as Republicans and say that's not enough. And then they come back and say, well, what do you mean it's 
not enough. Our streets aren't safe. Shame on you Republicans for not knowing that. That's the spin that we see many times. And, and unfortunately, we as Illinoisans have been duped too long. So that's exactly what's taken place with Mr. Irvin and his campaign. Um, I, I challenge you, and I've got my cards, and I'll give them to you. Go to our webpage, baileyforillinois.com. Make sure you look at our Facebook page, Darren Bailey for Governor, and you will see daily, you will see daily the communication that I, that I put out. And as a matter of fact, I ask you to even look so much as yesterday to the first interview that Mr. Urban conducted in two months. It was an absolute embarrassing disaster. And uh, interestingly enough, the press came at him with questions about me. And uh, he began to sweat. I did, just go and look at that, and you'll see what's going on. Because, friends, there's, there, there truly is one thing worse than Governor Pritzker being elected to one more term. And that is for us to elect the wrong Republican, or so-called Republican. And interestingly enough, the two other Republicans in the race that are, that are we're leading the path, Mr. Irvin is the, you know, he's, the money has got his name ID out. Just look at the policies of, of the city of Aurora, the highest tax city in the nation, the first sanctuary state in Illinois, a governor who stand, or a mayor who stands up and, and admonishes BLM, a mayor that stands up and, and, and pulls back and reigns in the powers of the police in this city, but yet he stands there and tells you that's not what I stand for. If we don't do our due diligence and get ourselves educated, uh, we're, we're going to find ourselves in a world of hurt. And that is why we are standing up, getting involved in this process. So here's the deal. I'm here to tell you that uh, you know, if somebody's got a question, we'll answer it. Uh, did anybody, has anybody seen today, uh, we didn't even know it this morning, Steve Cortez and the Steve Bannon, the War Room Show, he endorsed this this morning, a Trump advisor, former Trump advisor. We believe Trump will be coming to Illinois, potentially to Quincy. We believe we will have his endorsement. Uh, that's coming a little bit later, so you'll just have to pray and wait and see. Uh, I think uh, Thursday, either Thursday of this week or Thursday of next week, uh, Man Cal uh, from Chicago is, is, is endorsing us. So uh, there's just a lot of really cool things happening. The money's coming. The support's coming. We're getting our word out. I, have, I stand here before you today and tell you confidently we will win the uh, that we will win the primary and we will win the general because people are sick and tired of the Biden. They're sick and tired of the Democrat policies. And come this come November first, guys, buckle down, save your dollars because inflation is going to go out the roof. Gas price is going to be high. It's going to be pretty tough. And there's a whole host of other reasons that I won't get into. But when Cindy and I are downtown Chicago and in, in the areas of the south, the south and the west side, people are fed up. They're fed up. And um, they're just looking for answers. We show up in the churches. We show up in their communities. We earn their trust. And that's exactly what's been building this momentum. So it's an absolute honor to be with you here tonight. I know you came out for a reason. You can look on, on the social media and find out all you need to know about me. But does anyone have any questions? Any questions at all? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. So, yeah, Dan Croft, uh, 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 Amy Jacobs have endorsed me. They have a super pack working for us, I guess. Uh, um, Jeannie Ives, uh, we had her endorsement. It's just, yeah, the people that understand what Illinois can be, uh, they're behind us. So, uh, uh, I'm going to stand here and tell you that although up here, you guys are hearing a lot of mixed message, but it will be Central and Southern Illinois that actually win the primary for us. Cindy and I have a, an apartment in North Aurora. In the last year and a half, we've been up in North Aurora. We've been up here more than we've even been home. So after the primary, July 1st and November 1st, we're going to be camping downtown Chicago. The Collar County's up here. 100% of the time to get the message out because Central and Southern Illinois, you know, they know who I am. That our polls are even showing that. They've been aware of who our I am because of the stance that I've been taking. But up here, Governor Pritzker had the platform the whole time, so the message is a little bit watered down. So thank you for that. Any other comments or questions?
anything that I didn't answer that you're just burning in your ear because I am not afraid to answer anything. Well, thank you so much. Look at that. I talk every day that I can on Facebook, on my morning lives. People say, how are you going to govern? Oh, it's just exactly like that. We're going to communicate to the people. You may be sitting there thinking, yeah, this all sounds great, but I want to take you back to the election of 2020. Remember the progressive tax, the fair tax that got defeated? That needed 60% of the vote to pass. It was a constitutional amendment. The opposite happened. 56% of Illinoisans said no. That is a Republican landslide victory. We have that to build on, and that's exactly what we've been doing. We take a look at what Virginia did and what Ohio did. Most of their electable positions were filled with conservative candidates. We've done that. We're doing that in Illinois. They have 96% of their precincts were filled with poll watchers and election judges. We're going to make sure that that happens in Illinois. You go to your county clerk's office, you tell them you want to sign up to be a, a, a poll watcher. They're giving you your credentials. We're going to educate you more. And then as a statewide candidate, I can place you in any precinct in Cook County and the surrounding counties uh, to make sure that we monitor election fraud. And we show up to the polls, and we don't ever know who the judges are that are either running or running for retention. And number one, it's up to us to find out who they are. But number two, it's up to them to come out and make sure that we know who they are. So uh, thank you so much for being here tonight. Listen, friends, God bless you. Thank you so much. Cindy and I will be around here. Uh, thanks for coming out. You're going to be seeing a lot more of us. And uh, you're going to hear a lot more of our, uh, of our messaging. And I've got my cards for myself. I'm very accessible. You call, you text, you email. Questions. If you want to get involved with our team and our, and our effort, we've got an office that's, uh, I think, open this week at 83 West Main here in Lake Zurich. Our campaign office with signs 